The Fed announced the reportedly hawkish news that the central bank may raise rates, not this year, not next year, but by 50 basis points sometime in 2023. This tapering would slow the Fed's buying of $120 billion of debt securities a month with money created from the ether to some lesser amount. People forget the central bank kept its benchmark rate on hold for a tenth straight meeting after sweeping into emergency action amid the coronavirus pandemic in March of last year with a full percentage point cut. Yet again emergency government action has become permanent. This news sent the dollar screaming upward, with the DXY jumping from 90.54 to 92.32 at week's end. The price of gold was, of course, bludgeoned. The yellow metal dropped 6.5% over the next five days. The 10-year Treasury bond finished the week at a paltry 1.44%. Meanwhile, financial basket case Greece saw its 10-year rate finish at 79 basis points. Making no news was Lynn Alden's tweet that the Federal Reserve's balance sheet crossed $8 trillion in assets. Fed watcher Alden followed this with the news. Reverse repos jumped $235 billion today to $755 billion. Chairman Powell didn't articulate what the Fed will do. The financial press deciphered it this way, per Bloomberg. The Federal Reserve's so-called dot plot, which the U.S. Central Bank uses to signal its outlook for the path of interest rates, shows that officials expect no change in policy this year, while leaning toward two rate increases by the end of 2023, based on median estimates. Does this make sense? Free markets at work? Logical price discovery? After all, as Murray Rothbard explained, since the investment is always in anticipation of later sale, the investors are also engaged in entrepreneurship, in enterprise. Since when is forecasting a couple rate bumps two years from now considered hawkish to the point of making the dollar pop and gold flop? Since it's a Keynesian world, rather than an Austrian one, Lord Keynes reminds us, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Another point of view is, I'm looking at the gold market right now and I think this could prove to be a good time to buy, George Milling Stanley chief gold strategist at State Street Global Advisors, said. I see a lot of panic selling and I don't think that can last much longer. Basically, the market saw higher inflation and higher interest rates, but they completely ignored the fact that the hikes are at least two years away. A lot can happen in two years. Milling Stanley has a long enough memory to make the point. The last time that the Fed was actually in a rate tightening mode was between December of 2015 and December of 2018 so gold should have gone down. But it went from $1,050 in December of 2015 to $1,270 by December of 2018. So gold went up 21% in those three years, even though rates were raised nine times. Keynes pointed out, for it is, so to speak, a game of snap, of old maid, of musical chairs, a pastime in which he is Victor who says snap neither too soon nor too late, who passed the old maid to his neighbor before the game is over, who secures a chair for himself when the music stops. These games can be played with zest and enjoyment, though all the players know that it is the old maid which is circulating, or that when the music stops some of the players will find themselves unseated. While Keynes viewed speculation as a game, Rothbard viewed it more seriously. Entrepreneurship is also the dominant characteristic of buyers and sellers who act speculatively, who specialize in anticipating higher or lower prices in the future. Their entire action consists in attempts to anticipate future market prices, and their success depends on how accurate or erroneous their forecasts are. Nobody can say for sure the Fed will taper or increase rates. And just because the Fed's inflation has forced us all to learn to pump our own gas and scan our groceries, not many have the entrepreneurial savvy to invest properly to fund retirement. With the 800-pound Fed in the markets, finding a chair and forecasting accurately may be next to impossible. The S&P 500 closed last week at an all-time record high. This is quite a reversal from the previous week. There has been a shift in expectations. After the June FOMC meeting, investors were jittery that the Fed was going to tighten monetary policy to fight inflation. Now the thinking seems to be that there is no inflation problem. It really is just transitory. Everything is great because, well, the Fed tells us so. The big difference between last week and this week was last week everybody was worried that the Fed was going to fight inflation. This week they're not worried that the Fed is going to fight inflation because they don't think there's any inflation to fight because they pretty much have decided that the Fed is right and that inflation is transitory. 
Since inflation is transitory, the central bank won't have to adjust policy significantly to fight it. Of course, at some point rates will go up slightly. Monetary policy won't always be this loose. But the Fed is never really going to have to slam on the brakes because there is no inflation problem now or on the horizon. Sure, prices are moving up now. But there's nothing to worry about because it's all transitory. How do we know inflation is transitory? The Fed told us so. After all, the guys at the Fed are geniuses and they've never gotten anything wrong, so whatever they say, well, it must be true. So, if the Fed tells us inflation is transitory, we can take that to the bank. We've got nothing to worry about. With worries that the Fed might tighten monetary policy abated, gold gained slightly last week, but it didn't come close to recovering its losses from the previous week. Even though the markets are not as worried about the Fed fighting inflation with higher rates, but since everybody assumes the economy is great and there's nothing to worry about, the stock market is making new highs, there's no inflation, well, why buy gold? Meanwhile, the price of oil keeps going up and up and up. But if inflation is transitory, then the rising oil prices must be transitory as well, right? I don't think so. Anybody who can look at an oil chart, there is nothing transitory about this bull market. You see very little resistance in the oil chart. In fact, I don't see much resistance until we get to $100 a barrel. How can anybody believe this, inflation is transitory, nonsense when you look at the price of oil? Unless you think oil prices are irrelevant to the overall price structure, or oil prices could be rising this way in an environment where we don't really have any inflation, with the exception of energy. Except it's not energy. There are all sorts of commodities that are rising. Some of the commodities that saw the biggest spikes have pulled back, including lumber and copper. But relative to where they were before the bull market started, they remain extremely high. Anybody who now thinks there is nothing to worry about because bull markets have had a correction doesn't understand markets. Nothing moves up in a straight line. And a lot of these markets that have pulled back are simply now consolidating and ready to move up to new highs. People also point to the big GDP growth in the first quarter as a reason for optimism. But almost all of that growth came from an 11.4% gain in personal consumption expenditures. So, all of that GDP growth had to do with consumers spending money. And where were the consumers getting all this money? Well, they were getting it from the government in the form of stimulus checks, enhanced unemployment benefits. They were getting it by virtue of the fact they didn't have to pay their rent. They didn't have to pay the interest on their student loans. Ellipsis. So, a lot of people had a lot of extra money to spend. And they spent it, and the GDP went up. But this is not indicative of economic strength. This is actually indicative of inflation. The international trade numbers and the big trade deficits also reflect this economic weakness. The US is importing more and exporting less as Americans continue to spend printed money on goods and services produced overseas. The personal expenditure consumption PCE, number was also higher than expected. This is typically the Fed's favorite inflation measure because it understates inflation the most. Nevertheless, year-over-year -year PCE was up 3.9%. That's the biggest increase since 1991. The Fed is confident again that all of this is transitory despite the fact that there's no evidence that actually suggests that it is. They're just trying to make this up. They're just trying to relate everything to COVID and the reopening. And they are completely ignoring all of the monetary and fiscal policy that also coincided with COVID and the reopening. And they're blaming the price increases on COVID and ignoring the impact of the COVID cure, which was printing all this money, which is really the reason that we're seeing all these price increases. This was The Survival Economist. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.